Hello, Keith and Steve here again at Rock Island Auctions, and we've got two more cool guns from the vault. Steve, what have we got here? Well, our main point of interest today is this Smith & Wesson Number no. 3 Russian revolver. And the Russians are notable for the knuckle on the back mm -hmm. here and for the hook here, the finger hook. Now, this is more of a standard one here I'm looking at down below. It lacks that knuckle, it lacks that hook. But this is the way the Russians liked them. And I think the Turks uh, ordered a lot in the same configuration. Naturally, it's chambered in 44 Russian. And the thing that interested me about this gun was it wasn't made by Smith & Wesson. It was made by the Russians at the Tula Arsenal. They did it on equipment they bought from Ludwig Luva, the guy that founded DWM and went on to make Lugers and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that guy. So this is a really fine finely made gun. Um, it's every bit as nice as something Smith & Wesson would have cranked out back in the day. Yeah. These were considered a heavy duty combat type gun for the cavalry, which is kind of why some of these uh, improvements were made on it to where it was easier to handle when you were on horseback. That's what the Russians had in mind and when the Americans looked at this gun, they picked it up in the Schofield configuration, which again made it easier to use on horseback. The big deal on this was, once you cock it, you lift up on the hinge, it ejects all the shells automatically. This was automatic ejector. You know, the Smith & Wessons with the swing out cylinder, they're called hand ejectors because you had to swing the cylinder out and then hit the ejector button manually with your hand. These were the automatic ejector guns, just like the little lemon squeezers. And these were considered quite the gun by a lot of people. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Schofield, when it was first produced, outnumbered the, the Peacemaker by a good deal. There were more of these in circulation before the turn of the 20th century than there were Peacemakers. And as good as the 1873 was, this was more popular at the time. It packed a good punch in a good caliber. Now, 44 Russian. That was, there was 44 Special and then 44 Russian. Right. The they, Russian even, they even made some of these in 44 Henry, Henry. for the Turkish contract because they had a bunch of that ammo because mm -hmm. they were using Henry's yeah. as a combat rifle. Yeah, now 44 Russian, it's a little shorter than 44 Special. Correct? It is. Okay. A little less powerful, a little shorter. But it's a good all around short range cartridge. It is. I mean, it's packs a wallet. Now, this knuckle right here, that looks like a Colt Lightning. It they, does. They, it does, from but that. it also looks at, like things to come from Smith & Wesson, mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. That, that was kept for some other designs. Sure was. Maybe not as pronounced, but it's the same idea. Yeah, you can see that still in Smith's. And you can get these in 4440, along yeah. with 44 Henry, or 45 Schofield, obviously, for the government. Um, the government ordered a bunch of these, used them in the 45 Schofield. And because they had the Peacemakers in service also, the 1873s, they had uh, 45 Long Colt, as they called it, in uh, the stores. And sometimes you'd get a shipment of 45 Long Colt to try to fit in the Schofield, which doesn't work. So there was a short period of time when the U.S. military issued only 45 Schofield ammunition for both guns, because it would work in both. And it eliminated most of those uh, logistic snafus, let's say. So. This is a full-size combat gun made for the cavalry, pretty much. Really nice, well-thought-out design. Incredibly fast to unload and even load. Yeah. Hard to believe that the 1895 and the Gat revolver replaced this gun. It is, especially when you consider the firepower. Yeah. It was this a uh, whole lot faster to unload and load and at a bigger slug. Yeah. I'd but much rather have this. Yeah. going into combat. Now these were made from 1870 to 1915, correct? Right, and this particular one was made in 1886, 1886. like I said, in Russia. So uh, you don't find these very often on no. these shores. They're kind of rare with the uh, Russian markings on top and, and actually made at Tula. So all in all, really nice piece for a collector. We'd like to thank Rock Island Auction House for having us out, letting us look at this and many other fine guns, and thank you very much for watching. Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.